I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. We should have a good one on tap here today. It's the Steelers coming in at three and four, going up against the Colts, who come in at five and two. With that, let's get you out to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. They've got the call of this week nine matchup. Right at the convergence of the three rivers on Art Rooney Drive, we welcome you to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Today, it's a week nine matchup set to go here between the Indianapolis Colts and the Pittsburgh Steelers. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, we look at this Steeler ball club entering play, and they've lost three straight here, and it goes without saying, I guess, they could certainly use a win. And how do they get a win? Because they've lost three straight, I think it's paramount that they get a fast, clean start to this game. Meanwhile, for the visiting Colts, they come in on a good run, winners of five of their last seven. And going back through the tape, I thought they looked pretty good last week. It was a solid win, a comprehensive win. The first two months of the regular season down. What will the final two bring us as we're off in week nine? This will be fielded at the eight. Oh, a little 360. <laughs> and it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. So the Steelers offense getting set for their first drive. And they'll be led out by their eighth-year quarterback. throwing here to start the drive. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. A gain of six there on first. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. All right, here we go. Blue line it. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. And this opening drive not going to plan. This is now third and 13. All right, here we go. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. And he gets this away, angled for the sideline with a lot behind it. Wow. And out of bounds, sailed over, looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. And not great starting field position here for the offense. From the end zone, Rock. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. Now a play fake, and it's locked. And he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively, but instead it just brings up fourth down. 
I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And the Steeler offense, they're set up nicely as they take over. We get a glance at the Colts' defense as they work their way back on the field. And as we're going to see right here, they have been laying some pretty electrifying hits in this one. And these are for real. Okay, as you watch, think about putting yourself in that spot, about being the ball carrier or the receiver. I don't want to. And then taking that shot, it is something else. It's not like when we were watching that, that video clip where they showed you how they make sounds for movies. <laughs> this is for real. to him right up the gun and he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage but that's all officially no gain on the play and it's second down and the quarterback he's got some big threats at wide out and they seem to get bigger all the time don't they brandon every time i look out and watch a game we're getting these bigger more athletic acrobatic receivers we have some today tailback so quick on the spin uh, he's spinning man it's a gain of about three but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go and this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack and that's what they've done throughout this season this is a terrific unit they play together very very well and they don't permit big plays to happen They'll need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is here on third. Looking to throw. And that is incomplete. Here's Jordan Berry now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. So now the Colts backed up to start their initial drive. And they'll be let out by their quarterback, the very, very talented Andrew Luck. And Andrew Luck's skill set is absolutely fantastic. There's not anything that he can't do as a quarterback on the field. But I also think that he absorbed a little bit by osmosis. Some of that great bloodline, his father, formerly a quarterback in the NFL as well. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. Counting down toward the midway point up, in quarter up, one. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And a short gain across the 15 to the 17-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead them to third down. And a look at the Steelers' defensive unit. Stephon Tewitt's ability to play defensive end, and yet rise up and knock passes away when quarterbacks try to throw them, he makes it hard to get around. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. From the gun on third down, Luck. And he's got his man on the out round. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. A little football one-on-one -on -one there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. It'll be a pickup of just two, and that'll make it second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end. 
and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? He's going to loft one deep left side here. And both guys were there, but it falls incomplete. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. Throwing on third down, Locke. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And a gain there of 11 yards. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Ah, yes, this is where the expression staying ahead of the chains comes into play. Good runs like that one set you up well for third down. Here's Locke. He'll find his man on the comeback route. Complete. A good pick up there, a 22. Clock running under a minute to go in a scoreless first quarter. And they'll run it here. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. And they'll go on the ground. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Got to get to the 26 for a first. This is third down. Ah, uh, yes, that's today's NFL defensive tackle. Not just a space eater anymore. A guy with agility, movement skills, who can rush the passer and make plays in the offensive backfield. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. So an even first quarter on the scoreboard, but the threat of points on the horizon. Nothing, nothing, our score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. Back with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The Colts in possession of the football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and 10. And now for the offense, this is play number 11 here on this drive. Luck on first down. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Stephon Tua came out of Notre Dame as another one of those really tall defensive ends. And just wondered, would they be able to have the leverage to bend and make plays? I think he just gave us an answer with that tackle. He may try and run for this. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. And now the Colts call on their field goal unit here. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Well, partner, nothing comes open here, so he decides to escape out of there, and he doesn't pick up a first down, but he does gain additional.
Coming up here, this defense looking for a third down stop in the second quarter. Now it's Locke off the bootleg. And he can't come up with a pick. Nearly his second of the game. Instead, four. Here we go on fourth, Luck, and he's got Rodgers. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. I remember in pregame when we were talking. Inside of two minutes for this offense, second quarter. They've got the football, but on their own side of the field. Following the fumble recovery, here's Lott. And he fires one incomplete. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. To the air, Luck on second down. And he comes back with one complete. That one good for 10 yards. And they'll be faced with a third and in inches. So completion on second down, that brings up third. Luck on third down. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Partner, a lot of people think the tight end's a safety valve position, but I think in situations like this, he's often a primary receiver, and they missed an opportunity there. Yeah, missed an opportunity indeed to pick up the first. They are going for it. It's locked, and they hit him as he throws, as this one's going to go straight down to the turf. So this offense with 60 seconds to go to try to at least get into field goal range, and they start from their own territory. And the Colts coming out now. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. A good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down and when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily... The coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here, because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's it. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. They go play action here on first down. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Ten yards still left on second down. They'll fake the handoff. Now Locke. That is caught right at the ten-yard line. Fifteen yards there for number fifteen. Really good job by the offense there. Every second counts right now. So for them to get out of bounds and save some time, that's a nice move. Now a first down throw. Luck. This will be caught at about the five. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Their big-bodied receiver hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Colts are an extra point away from tying up this football game.
Solid drive here has his offense in really good position. Can they finish the drive off? Let's find out. It's first and 10 inside the red zone. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Here's Luck now on second down. Now he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. Their big tight end with his second TD of the game, his sixth on the year. And the Colts have taken the lead here in the fourth. I know we often laugh and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. the passer penalty Charles and of course that's 15 yards and everyone knows how protected the quarterbacks are you've got to make sure that when you launch at a quarterback that you're hitting him in the right spot and in the right time no gain on the play that time and it sets up second and goal from the five. Now they'll run it on the toss. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. On goal-to-goal -goal runs, when you create lost yardage plays, the only way that happens is either called pressure or what I like to call straight-ahead pursuit. A great read, and they get to the backfield to make the play. And that was a big chunk of yardage lost. False start, offense. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. A dime look defensively. Big play coming on third and goal. They can still blitz out of this look. Call it no gain on the play, so no help there. And now fourth and goal. Brandon, it's easy to make decisions from right up here where we are, right in the cheap seats, but let's be frank about this one. This isn't even a decision as far as I'm concerned. They have to go for it here. Field goal does you almost no good as time's running out in the game. If you want to win, you have to be aggressive here. All right, so this one's now back within a field goal, and if anybody tells you they see how this one's going to end, I'd have to say they're probably lying, Charles. And this game's had more twists and turns than a good mystery novel, and I have a feeling we've got a few more twists and turns in store for us before they shake hands here. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right? To be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. Well, we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. Now a play fake here on first down. He's got the hook up here on the comebacker, complete. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Well, it's obvious to me that the big guy is beyond locked in. We saw last week 
a scintillating performance. We're seeing it again. I think he and his coordinator are in lockstep right now. Sometimes a tip of the cap to the guys calling the plays here, yeah? Not just calling the plays, setting the game plan, sitting with him during the week, watching tape as they formulate it. You know, the best ones, they listen to their guy and say, okay, what do you like this week? You like this play? You don't like that play? And that helps them formulate what they're going to do. Second and ten, luck again. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Time is starting to run out, really becoming a factor. We'll see if the defense can get the stop they need to get the ball back to the offense. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. And here comes play number six on this drive. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. On first and ten, Locke. Quick throw, that's complete on the inside slam. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a first down in field goal range already. Red zone opportunity. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he gets it. Now the Steelers put a stop to the action with a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. And to give this time to the tailback. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Luck now to throw. Hard throw, incomplete. So a big one coming now for Cairo Santos. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through, and that'll move their lead up to four now. And that field goal caps an 11 play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. And at least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. It looks like a loss of right around 11 there on first down to set him back on second. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. They'll look to throw. And he will find his man on the outside. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. And on third and 15, we see the dime look. Six DBs on the field. Playing pass all the way. Surveying the field. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And yeah, they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. He's back to throw. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. The goal of anyone running a curl route is to make sure you try and get defenders on your back and shield them away from the football. But sometimes, even when you run a good route, the defense finds a way to knock it away. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Single, single, slot, slot. Hey, you're on an island over there. Here we go now. Green! 
back to throw. To the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. It didn't check off every box, but the most important one. Got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. They may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. Third down, the Colts beefing up the secondary. Six defensive backs in the game. Back to throw. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. They're going to hurry back to the line now. And the spike comes now with just under 40 ticks left. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. He'll look to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and it's going to be a first down. Well done. And the offense moving quickly to the line. So there's the spike as it comes with 23 seconds to go. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Oh, no, he lost the football. Down four late, got to go for it here on fourth down. One final shot, they'll look to throw. And it's incomplete, so their final drive comes up empty, and with that, the ball game is over. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game, but these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because you know, open air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So for Indianapolis, they close out this first half at a very solid 6-2. and two, And they will head home next week to take on the Washington Redskins. Meanwhile, for the Steelers, they fall two games under 500 now at 3-5. And, and they'll be back home next.